everyone. Uh, welcome to Human Stories. My name is Ning Yuan, and I'm a postdoc at the University of Oslo in Norway. Thank you for inviting me to this super exciting initiative. And today I would like to talk about the cultural meanings of pandemic face masks. Although this is not a topic on which I did extensive ethnographic research, it is very much a topic that weighs heavily on me because of my personal background and the context of the COVID-19 pandemic. So last summer, about half a year um, into the pandemic, I wrote a reflection article for the journal Anthropologica called Writing Against the Mask Culture, Orientalism and COVID-19 Responses in the West. So in this short talk today, I will briefly discuss my arguments in the article and how I have come to develop these thoughts from my perspective. And of course, the goal of um, writing this article and for recording this talk is really just to encourage discussions. And I'm also hoping to make anthropological knowledge more relevant to current and public affairs and to make this video useful in some way. So since the first coronavirus outbreak hit China in January 2020, how different countries respond to the crisis has sparked interesting discussions regarding their respective history, political systems, and culture. In the West, many people attribute the acceptance of universal mask wearing among Asian populations to a so-called mask culture. I argue in the article that mask culture emerges during the pandemic as an Orientalist concept in Western public discourses to define the East and to freeze differences between self and other. Orientalism in its everyday manifestation has not only contributed to the initial underestimation of the pandemic in the West, but has also provided a, um, a foundation for essentialist representations of Asian cultures. Self-other binary has greatly shaped Western responses to and narratives of the pandemic in two prominent ways. First, Mask wearing has been considered as an Asian practice associated with other Asian cultural stereotypes, such as submissiveness to state power. And second, the threat of the coronavirus was initially viewed as minimal because outbreaks in Asia were far and distant, and therefore the suffering of the other was not really considered urgent in the West. As the pandemic unfolded in China in early 2020 and gradually made its way to the West, what I noticed in Canada was that the Chinese communities in North America were very concerned with the revival of anti-Asian racism and everyday micro transgressions, such as name calling, finger pointing and social othering. The Chinese communities were also very frustrated by the initial underestimation of the crisis and the persistent uh, politicization of mask wearing in the West. And here I think the anthropological concept of Orientalism can be potentially useful for us to understand the different attitudes towards mask wearing in the East and West. Orientalism as defined by Edward Said refers to the style of thought and the mode of discourse based upon a fundamental distinction made between the East and the West. More specifically, it is a Western style for dominating and re uh, restructuring the Orient by authorizing views of it. In doing so, the West gained in strength and identity by setting itself off against the Orient as a sort of surrogate and underground self or an alter ego. In this way, um, Western narratives of the other often reinforce and perpetuate the symbolic order of Orientalism based on the assumption of a fundamental distinction between self and other. As Abulugad convincingly argues, culture is often a concept shadowed by coherence, timelessness, and discreteness. In the incautious way of using culture is often a language of power, and it often creates generalizations and boundaries and to further legitimize self-other binary. So if we follow this line of arguments, 
then we can observe from the pandemic that a lot of the media discourses about mask wearing have mistakenly led people in the West to believe that mask wearing only has a long history in the East, but is a new practice to the West in 2020. We see, for example, many media reports that uh, are with titles such as why Asians accept masks easily, why uh, Chinese are universally wearing masks. And some authors use mask culture to explain this phenomenon and some um, find evidence in the history, for example, uh, Chinese people adopted masks to prevent plague around 1910, or more recently, universal mask wearing was adopted to protect against air pollution in bigger cities. However, such media reports selectively overlooked that mask wearing was also widely accepted in the West so as we can see on this slide, um, the picture on the left um, are people who were wearing masks during the influenza pandemic in 1918 in California. And on the right are people wearing masks during the wildfire incidents in California in 2017. So there is nothing inherently Asian about wearing masks in the case of COVID-19, influenza, plague, or air pollution. It is only a human thing to wear something that you think is going to protect you in some way uh, when you have a new virus. So to think or argue that Asian people have a sort of mask wearing culture could be detrimental because it adds on to cultural stereotyping. So then what is the cultural stereotype associated with Asian people wearing masks and why is it problematic? In the context of North America, a stereotype commonly associated with mask wearing, uh, especially mask wearing Asian population is the imagined submissiveness to government power, um, especially among Chinese populations. Um, this has been the rationale of many anti-lockdown protests we have been seeing so far. And these people argue that mask mandates are violations of personal freedom. And here I would like to compare the cultural stereotypes associated with mask wearing and hijab wearing. As we can see um, in this slide, this is a, a quite famous comic, I believe, um, and a lot of anthropologists use it when they're teaching cultural relativism. So different forms of uh, face covering are often stereotypically considered as submission to certain forms of domination. For example, as Abu Lugal argues, the veiling of Muslim women is seen in the West as the ultimate sign of gender oppression. In the case of mask wearing, it's seen as the ultimate sign of state oppression. However, it is worth highlighting that the belief that unmasking is an individual action against excess state power is itself Western centric. Assuming this belief as universal and applying it to Asian populations during the COVID-19 pandemic reinforces Orientalist narratives of the other. In Asia, in a lot of cases, instead of considering unmasking as part of the tradition of protest and disobedience, masking that protects anonymity often symbolizes the power of collective protests and resistance movements. In fact, unmasking has gradually become a popular tool to suppress mass protests widely used by authorities equipped with facial recognition technologies in both the East and the West. By associating masking in the East with the symbol of their lack of freedom, Orientalist representations once again brought the Orient into Western learning, Western consciousness, and the Western empire. So in the end, I want to briefly discuss why all of this matters and what masks can tell us about people today who are living through the COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, what we should learn from this unprecedented pandemic beyond the obvious that people are always on the move in a globalized world. So since the pandemic started, we've seen um, the rise of anti-Asian racism. And I think the question that we should really ask is fundamentally how we care for the sufferings of the other. 
of those um, others believed to be strangers to the West. When Washington Post, a journalist wrote on Twitter in March 2020, and I quote here, one of the most painful lessons of this crisis is the extent to which America cannot or will not identify with Chinese pain. Every horror that is happening here happened first in Wuhan, China. We covered it. Many people did not care, end quote. This tweet resonated strongly with members of the Chinese communities in North America, as there were plentiful reports by Chinese media early in the coronavirus outbreak, revealing the severity of the crisis. Crucial knowledge about the new coronavirus and how to contain its transmission circulated by Chinese frontline doctors on Chinese media in early 2020 was rarely recognized or reported in Western media until much, much later. The question that we should all reflect on is how implicated we are in the lives of the other. Sometimes these people are strangers suffering in a place far away. And this is not only just relevant to the COVID-19 pandemic that started in China, this is relevant to many, many kinds of crises in the world. If we think about how the West responded to the Rwanda genocide or Ebola outbreaks in West Africa, et cetera, et cetera. The most difficult and important thing we must do remains to be fully embracing the humanity of others and letting their suffering fracture our own existence. It all comes down to how we render the sufferings of the other meaningful and relevant to us and how we care. So to finish this video, I would like to thank Ingrid, who really inspired me in an interesting conversation and later encouraged me to put some of my original thoughts together. And I would like to thank the Journal of Anthropologica for kindly publishing this article and also the um, Everyday Orientalism blog that has also inspired me in many ways when I was in the process of writing this paper. I invite you to subscribe to the YouTube channel of Human Stories to check out other interesting talks. Thank you very much for watching. Peace and light to you and yours. So I, I you know, I sometimes do this and do that.